Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Hello and welcome back to Big Mouth. And you can keep this or any other conversation I ignite going on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Over on my Vero at Big Mouth One. And the extension to this channel, give or take the odd oddball video, is my Instagram. Big mouth. Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And yes, we will be going into the outrage over no sword in Wonder Woman 1984. And I did tell you when I saw the test screening, people are going to have opinions about this film. And I'm going to talk about the continued outrage about the black uh, suit that um, uh, Zack Snyder uh, dropped the other day. There's lots of outrage. There's people saying he shouldn't be wearing it. There's people saying that it's a fake picture by Zack Snyder. Oh, anyway, we're going to be going into that. And then in the final part of today's DCEU Daily, I'm going to reiterate uh, my vision for Superman. And we've spoken about this before, but we're going to speak about it again until it gets done. I'm going to give you my vision for Superman on film, um, on the big screen, and on the small screen. So, lots to get excited about. Put the popcorn in the microwave. Get ready. It's time for Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. So, let's begin. Right, Bounding Into Comics have done a little article. Article. Gal Gadot explains why Wonder Woman will not use her sword. A very aggressive speech, Mark. So, let's have a look at this. Wonder Woman 1984 star Gal Gadot recently explained why Wonder Woman will no longer use her sword in the upcoming film. At a recent convention covered by YouTube channel Cinepop, Gadot revealed Wonder Woman would no longer use her sword in Wonder Woman 1984. Wonder Woman does not carry a weapon, no. We had an intention to let go of the sword because there is something very aggressive with the sword. If you have a sword, you need to use it. So we wanted to give that up. Interesting. She also noticed she will not be using her shield either. And we didn't feel that the shield was necessary either. She's a goddess. She can fight. She's super strong. And she has the skills. She has the gauntlets, the lasso. She has her tiara. And that's about it. It's a rather increasing, it's a rather interesting move given the first Wonder Woman film went out of the way to see the character acquire the God Killer sword. However, that film would later reveal that the sword wasn't actually the God Killer, but that it was Wonder Woman who was actually the God Killer. The sword would eventually be destroyed by Ares. He's even, he even tells her that it's, that he, that is not the God Killer. You are only only a god killer, only a god can kill another god. Zeus left the child he had with the queen of the Amazons as a weapon to use against me. While the god killer sword would be destroyed by Ares in Wonder Woman, Diana would acquire a new sword, a, the, the sword of Athena, by the, time, by the time of Batman v Superman and Justice League. It's possible Wonder Woman 1984 could be retconning Wonder Woman's use of the sword, as seen in Batman v Superman and Justice League. I'm going to get to that. Don't worry, I'm going to get to that. But it's also possible she didn't acquire the sword of Athena until after the events of Wonder Woman 1984 take place. A more logical assertion, yes? Wonder Woman has used the sword and shield throughout her long comic book career. In fact, she wielded a sword back in 1942. In, what, in Wonder Woman, while participating in a contest to determine the strongest maiden... Sorry, let me start again. In Wonder Woman issue number one, while participating in a contest to determine the strongest maiden, Diana mounts a Kanga and then jewels her fellow Amazonians with a sword. Oh, they've got a beautiful panel here of Wonder Woman uh, number one. And, and you can't see it, I'm afraid, but it's beautiful. I love that. I wish I could screenshot that. That's awesome. Upon winning the contest, she's even awarded her iconic outfit. In fact, using these weapons was part of the Amazonian culture, as Wonder Woman creator Charles Moulton explains. Wonder Woman's story is the history of her race. It reaches fact back into, into that golden age when proud and beautiful women, stronger than men, ruled Amazonia and worshipped ardently the immortal Aphrodite, goddess of love and beauty. 
Out of that legendary glory which present present day Amazon still preserve in secret comes Wonder Woman, the most powerful and captivating girl of modern times. The fearless maiden who gave up her heritage of peace and happiness to help America fight evil and aggression. Oh, this is another beautiful panel, by the way. Maybe I've been a bit harsh about bounding into comics saying that, you know, they're part of the fandom. And they probably are, but this is quite a good spread. And they even honoured that heritage in the first Wonder Woman movie, as we see Wonder Woman training with, with various weapons. And while they are ditching Wonder Woman's sword and shield, it does appear she will acquire a brand new set of armour, as the most recent trailer shows. What do you make of Gal Gadot's explanation for why the sword and shield won't be featured in Wonder Woman 1984? Right, let's get into this because um, I'm not triggered by this, and I'm going to explain. I'm going to. I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to explain to you why. Now, Gal says there they're not using it. They felt it, it was too aggressive. Also, she's going to be not in the modern modern era, not our era, but 84 is a modern era. It's not. It's not World War One. There's people walking the streets. If they had listened to me right, you're all going, oh my God, how can they do this? She's always had a sword and shield in the comics. If she was walking around with her sword and shield around civilians in Wonder Woman 1984, you'd be going, oh, as if. As if she wouldn't be arrested. You would find flaws in that. You would. You know what you're all like. But now... Because this has happened, you're going, oh, these are SJWs, this is so PC. No, it's the right move. Also, this is not a permanent move. The environment she's in, she doesn't need the sword and the shield. Maybe she, look, she would need a sword and a shield, maybe to fight Cheetah. Obviously, she doesn't know that. She doesn't know Cheetah's coming, right, what's, good, what's coming to her. But at the end of the day, I think it's the right move for this film, for the environment that we're in, in this film. There is no need for it. Also, they do want young children to watch this film. They do want this film to be for the family. Now, the first one was for the family as well. Now, and here's another point. It's not like we've never seen Wonder Woman or this Wonder Woman, you know, having the shield and the sword. She did it in the first film. Don't we want to be a bit different? Like, say in the first film, right? Let's draw a picture here. In the first film, there is no invisible jet, right? We saw the lasso, but we're going to see the lasso more in Wonder Woman 1984. And this time, we get the invisible jet. So no sword or shield, but we get the invisible jet. Aren't you happy about that, that we're seeing new elements of this character? Why are you all triggered about this? It's not a big deal. Let's just re-look really at what Gal had to say, because I am fascinated by this outrage culture now. Where are we? Where are, you, where are we? Wonder Woman does not carry a weapon. No, we had an intention to let go of the sword because there's something very aggressive with the sword. If you have a sword, you need to use it. So we wanted to give that up. So basically, right, this is double talk because this is how Hollywood works. They don't want, look, knife crime all over the world is on a big level. You know, they are, you've got to be conscious or conscious of what's going on around you in the world. I don't really have a problem with that. And we didn't feel that the shield was necessary either. She's a goddess. She can fight. She's super strong. She has the skills. She has the gauntlets. The lasso. She has her tiara. And that's about it. For me, right, I want to see Wonder Woman not needing. Not needing extra things. She's Wonder Woman. And there's another reason for not having the sword and the shield. To show how strong, what a great fighter she is because... She was trained by her auntie, right? And she was trained by her mother and the other Amazonians. So she's very proficient in fighting. So there's no justification for saying, how can she do all that? She's a trained warrior. She's not us. She's grown up in another environment. We saw the sword and shield in the first film. We don't need to see it again. Yes, I know. Um, she did have it in um, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. No. They are not going to course correct that. No, they're not going to delete that and say Batman v Superman didn't happen. Ah, now, they may do in another way. They may release the cut that creates the flashpoint situation. We don't know that. I haven't seen that test screening. I've seen the test screening um, pretty much where none of that happens. 
But there is, look, there's multiple cuts of this film. There's multiple cuts, cuts of all films. This is how it works, right? So they can, having a multiple cut, right, is like molding something with clay. So what you do is, you have a piece of clay here, a piece of clay here, a piece of clay here. You mold it once, you mold it twice, you mold it three or four times. Then you decide which one you're going to put on display. That's what a film is. Now, you can't really do that with television because of the scheduling. It's impossible. It's a factory. But with film, you have got the vehicle to do that. So we don't know which one they're going to release. So that's really exciting. And I'm glad I haven't seen that version as well, because if they do release that version, wow. If you think people are outraged over the no sword and no shield, you haven't seen anything yet. Anyway, I'm in support for this. I don't understand why people are so outraged. You already saw it in the first film. What's the big deal? Right, that's enough of that. I put that straight. I've, uh, I've stood on my big wall and I said what I think. And that's what having a, a YouTube channel is all about. Right, now, the more outrage, more of this outrage culture. As Superman's black suit, the picture Zack Snyder dropped the other way, is like a slow developing bomb. It explodes a little bit, then bigger, then bigger. So as usual, you get the smart asses from the fandom. Oh, that's not real. He faked that picture. Then you, then it just explodes. It just explodes. Oh, why didn't he post the real picture? Oh, why isn't he in blue? Oh, Zach said he's not in blue until two, Justice League 2 and 3. Don't you get it? It's a journey. He dies. He's telling, actually telling you the Jesus story. He dies for our sins, right? Then he's swearing our sins with the black costume, right? It's all in, there in the comics if you're a diehard comic book fan. So he has to wear the mullet, the beard, and the black costume. And then eventually, in Justice League 2 and 3, he earns the right to wear the God's outfit again. He becomes a hero again. He is reborn, right? And he becomes the hero, the icon, uh, you, know, the, you know, the person we look up to again. That's the point. He sacrificed himself like Jesus did. Listen, I'm not religious. I couldn't give a shit about religion in the Bible. I'd be honest about you, but it's great. The Bible actually has got some great stories. I see them like a comic book, fictional, but there's some great stories. And a lot of superhero stories and comic books are taken from the Bible because, as I say, they're great narratives. But I'm not religious. I don't want you to say, oh, God, this is a bit of a Jesus creeper. No, 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 no. I'm not into all that. I'm just telling you. It pretty, S S Snyder sees Superman like Jesus Christ. Um, Brian Singer saw him the same way. If you go back and watch Superman Returns. So basically, he has to earn the right to wear his blue heroic costume again. And this is the genius that is, um, what's his name? Oh, I forgot his name. Chris Terrio, that's it. He looks at everything intellectually. So there was a gradual thing here. So definitely, again, like the Wonder Woman, no shield, no sword. I don't really understand all the arguments. And it all starts off with people saying, Nah, not a real costume. He faked it. They probably didn't shoot it or he's not allowed to show the picture. Yes, yeah, so what? Zack Snyder tells you on Vero, my Superman in my Justice League, if you ever get to see it, where's the black costume? What's the big deal? What's the debate? What's the arguments about? I really, really don't get it. So we all need to just calm down. The world is just full of hate and anger and dispute. Let's show some love and respect for each other. Let's have a heated discussion without being so nasty. Yes, hello, it's that part of the episode of today's DCEU Daily where we talk about Superman. And yes, I am gonna read you my vision for a Superman story yet again, until I get through to Warner Brothers out there that Superman needs to be front and centre. He's your number one character. He's your number one seller. And if he isn't your number one seller in the comics, it's because you're not doing him properly. Simple as that. You haven't had a film to be totally successful to attract the mainstream. Here's a way around that. Look, Superman is a big sell. We live in such a negative, toxic era. 
And Superman is the very opposite of that. Someone to look up to. Someone after you've had a shit day of work or someone's been nasty to you online. You can watch his films or his animated adventures and go, yeah, the world's a better place now. That's how it meant for me. I used to come home. I was bruised and bleeding after being bullied at school. And I used to come home and look into Christopher Reeve's eyes. I know that looks a bit dodgy. And believe in Superman's goodness. That's what's so great about him. His goodness. Henry Cavill has that same look in his eyes. So did Tom Welling's performance in Smallville. All of them. And I hate all this thing where people go, people are attacking Brandon Ralph's Superman now since Crisis on Infinite Earths. And it disgusts me. Brandon Ralph's a great Superman, whether on the CW or Superman Returns. Henry Cavill is a great Superman. Christopher Reeve is a great Superman. Okay, Dean Cain's an average Superman, I admit, but he was on a very low budget show, probably should never have been cast as Superman. But you know what? Um, Gerard Christopher as Superboy, awesome. We've had many actors play this character, right? And they've all done a great job. But instead of putting these people against each other, I have a suggestion for you. How about we have my take, my vision on Superman being a, a proper HBO TV series, not HBO Max, HBO. Have the budget of Game of Thrones, have the artistry, have the sets of Game of Thrones, have the big budget, make it epic. And my concept works. And I'm going to read that out to you again. Some of you may be new to the channel. Please subscribe. So, and then, right, we have Man of Steel 2. We have Zack Snyder in charge of that. We bring back Brandon Ralph's Superman Returns, Christopher Reeve, Superman, and give him his stories and make multiple films on that Superman, make multiple films on Henry Cavill's Superman, and have my Superman on the small screen with HBO, not HBO Max, as I've, as I've um, repeated. So you're going to have three different Supermans. For those of you who say, oh, we just can't overflow, overflow the arena with Superman, yes, we can. He's that effing awesome. And Warner Brothers, are sorry, I'm trying to get a job with you. I want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to my vision. But at the end of the day, you're not listening. You're hiding Superman. Because we live in an environment now where we've got to paint men as the negative, right? I want to see an entertainment industry where we build women and men up. And they stand together. Men of colour. Women of colour. White men. White women. Asian women. Everyone. Let's rise everyone up. We don't have to show men as the enemy. Because ultimately, we're not men. We're not women. We're not black. We're not white. We're individual people with different, unique personalities. And we've got, to, that's what we should be displaying to the world. And maybe if that's what the entertainment industry was doing from the beginning, instead of spreading hate, saying that men are bad and women are good, right? If we actually did what I suggested then President Trump wouldn't be president. Boris Johnson wouldn't be prime minister, right? We wouldn't have this hatred around the world. And Superman is a beacon for hope, a beautiful beacon. But he's not perfect. He's got to have flaws, definitely. No question about that. But, right, we can have three different versions of Superman. One on the small screen, Ralph's version, Cavill's version, right? from different universes, and maybe one day we can have crisis on multiple Superman Earths and have all three of these Superman meet. How awesome would that be, right? So let me read you again my vision for Superman, my idea. My Superman movie idea. Superman has been on Earth for thousands of years. He's had hundreds of adventures. He's discovered worlds, explored space. The world knows him as Cal. People have seen him from a distance, never seen his face. Even when he has caught people, he's so quick they haven't seen his face. Clark decides it's time to become more human, so he embraces his Clark Kent persona and gets a job at the Daily Planet, where he also gets his foster son Jimmy Olsen a job as a photographer. Yes, I'm changing canon. He fostered Jimmy when he was 10 years old. Jimmy lost his parents in an explosion Superman failed to stop which Jimmy doesn't know about. No, Clark haven't, hasn't lied to him. He just never told him. Also, working on the Daily Planet, Lois Lane and John Corbin, 
who are, who are also dating. Clark is attracted to Lois. Clark and John quickly become good friends. Ex-soldier Perry White is the editor-in-chief of the Daily Planet. Yes, I've made him, I've made him a soldier because I want kind of a Lawrence Fishburne type, kind of Samuel Jackson type of character who can lead the Justice League, right? And I would, I, when Lawrence Fishburne was cast, I thought they were going to make him some kind of leader of the Justice League. So I just like making more of characters than they've already been given. And I, that was kind of my plan. But when John Corbin is shot dead on the order of Lex Luthor, he's taken to LexCorp and brought back to life by being rebuilt, by being rebuilt, powered with a kryptonite heart. Lex names him Metallo and controls him via a chip at the back of his head. Metallo begins to go after targets Lex orders him to. When Cal realises he, he is powered by kryptonite, he goes to the Justice League for counsel. But not long after Metahuman Manchester Black arrives with his team, the Elite, Manchester tells the Justice League that Corbin and all criminals must be taken out so they are never a threat again. Cow and the Justice League don't agree, and Manchester uses the media to whip up a hate campaign against Cow and the Justice League. Clark begins to have flashbacks to the Second World War where governments of the world were pressuring him to get involved. Some people even turn on him for not killing Hitler, after being ordered to by influential figures. If I kill him for you, then I must kill you for him. So that basically, and the reason he's able to have flashbacks to the Second World War, which I didn't put here, this is pinned on my Twitter, right? So go and check it out if you want to reread that again. Look, if you don't like it, criticise it. Um, obviously, be a bit constructive. Don't be mean. You know, think about my feelings. I think about your feelings, right? Well, I try. I try. Anyway, right, the whole idea is that my Superman has been around for thousands of years. So Ma and Pa Kent are no longer alive, but he can think back about them, right? So he's only just went to work at the Daily Planet. So he's only just met Lois Lane. Of course, Lana Lang is long since gone. And there's flashbacks to so what I'm, my idea is for this kind of HBO TV show is having Superman be this kind of Highlander character. And I've mentioned this on here before. The Highlander TV show was brilliant because every week he meets someone that he met in the past in his history. Because Highlander is either hundreds or thousands of years old. So it, it was it's, for me, it's a great concept. You've got a Superman who's been around for nearly a thousand years on Earth, nobody's really had a close look at him. He's a legend. He saves people, but then he starts to embrace his human side. He works in the Daily Planet. He has feelings for Lois Lane. He becomes friends with John Corbin. John Corbin and Lois are a couple. John dies, and then he becomes Metallo. And then the Manchester Black thing. And that is my premise. That would be the first season. Now, when that story is done, then Brainiac would arrive, and at the end of the second season, Brainiac would imprison Clark in the Phantom Zone while he does terrible things to humanity and the rest of the galaxy. I've got kind of a free season plan. So this is what I'm saying. You can have my Superman, my HBO Superman, right? You can have Brandon Ralph's Superman in a trilogy of films, right? And then you could have Henry Cavill do another three films as well. And then you do this big thing where they all meet. Crisis on whatever it is. Crisis on multiple Superman Earths or whatever, right? So that, yeah, crisis on infinite Superman Earths. That's what I'd do. After they do their movies, right? And then they fight together. They're different versions of the same character. Imagine that. Superman being everywhere. And I'd, I'd want a Superman cartoon, right? Not a baby one. But one that's really cool and epic, Superman should be everywhere. He should be oversaturated because he's the only one who can take it. I believe Batman should get the same kind of treatment as well. And I don't understand Warner Brothers' lack of vision here. There is an opportunity here to do something special with Superman. I believe my idea to oversaturate the market with Superman is awesome. It may not be fashionable because he's a man, but at the end of the day, he's the best man of, of us all. He's the best of us. He's the best of any man and any woman.
Superman's the best because he'll always do the right thing. And as we saw in Batman v Superman, including sacrificing his own life. And when I explain why he didn't give the kryptonite pole to uh, Wonder Woman, because he wouldn't want someone else to die. When he believes that creature is part of his planet and he believes it's his responsibility, this is my world, you are my world. It's self-explanatory. And I'd love to see Superman oversaturated everywhere because there's multiple dimensions in his character. There's so many things you can explore. When people tell you there's not much you can do with Superman, right, because he's so powerful, it's a cop-out. It's laziness. It's bone idleness. So what do you think about my idea, my Superman idea of having Cavill have his movies, Ralph have his movies, my HBO Superman, and then bringing them together for a big crisis storyline? Let me know in the comments. What do you think of my reaction about the outrage towards no sword and no shield in Wonder Woman 1984? And what do you think about what I've had to say about Zack Snyder posting the black costume, Henry Cavill Superman in the black costume? Uh, do you think I'm right? Do you think outrage culture is just getting too much? Or do you think I'm wrong? I don't mind. Give me your honest opinion down below constructively. Please like, share, and especially subscribe. Share the channel. And I'll be back tomorrow for more DCEU Daily.